Okay, so we all know the most mind-blowing moment of any tech product or consumer electronic that we own. It could be the new M2 MacBook Air or the M1 Pro MacBook Pro. And if you forgot that moment, this is a brief reminder for you. Most of the times these machines tend to cost an arm and a leg so we want to be able to utilize them to their full potential and more often than not I actually do see quite a number of people having issues setting up their devices for the first time or under utilizing them so in this video I'm going to be showing you the best and fastest way to set up your Mac and some settings that you can sort of play with that will better enhance your user experience and give you the best value for your device. My name is Ben and this is Half Man Half Tech. So first things first, the first thing that I encourage you to do once you receive your new device is to basically just do a visual inspection. It's really easy and doesn't take a lot of time. Sometimes these devices tend to be scratched or damaged during shipping and it could be something that's internal or that won't work well. So just do a quick visual inspection of your device, turn it upside down and sometimes it's good to test out the ports to make sure that they are working properly and also the accessories that came in the box with the device it's always good to find this out sooner than later when setting up your Mac Apple has really made a good useful tool that is called migration assistant and it's basically a tool that will help you take your data from your old device to your new device and also you can do this between other operating systems so the way time machine works you need an external drive like this that you see here it's a four terabyte drive so more than enough storage using migration assistant will save you a ton of time when it comes to setting up your Mac and you'll be able to transfer all your data including some downloads or files that would have otherwise been missed. Another crucial step to take initially when setting up your Mac is to actually set up the Find My Network. This is a simple step that overlooked by most people and you never realize how important this step is until you get to like a situation where you need to find your device. So I do highly encourage you to turn on Find My Network or find my device once you set up your Mac for the first time and also on the find my section another pro tip I would like to let you know of is to always write down the model and serial number of your devices elsewhere not stored in that actual device because if it does get lost and you can't find your serial or model number you can always reference that note and it goes a long way in protecting your device and giving you that peace of mind. So finally, you've passed the setup section of the Mac and it's booted up. So the first thing that I highly advise you do once you reach this stage is to go into your system preferences and perform a software update. Now, most of the times the software or operating system that ships with the Mac isn't the one that's current. So it means that there's most probably an update that's going to be available for you that's going to provide security and stability updates and sometimes new features and changes and to add to that it's sometimes not just the software update itself but within system preferences you are able to update some of the pro apps from Apple and also some VP9 decoders or video codecs by Apple to make it more compatible with Apple Silicon since with time this is something that's uh, been added to support more devices and more software so updating your device will go a long way in giving you that good and better user experience. One thing that annoys me when setting up the Mac is that I have to physically forcefully press the trackpad in order for my click to register so one of the things that I typically do to make my user experience better is to go into the system preferences and go to the trackpad settings and enable tap to click. 
this means I can just tap using my finger and I don't have to forcefully press down on the trackpad in order for me to click and also I do tend to change the cursor speed because I find that the one that ships by default with macOS tends to be slow and just customize the cursor better because in a sense your cursor or your finger is going to be the most common way that you're going to interact with your Mac so just make it a good user experience and make it better for yourself. Most of the times what makes a good device is the software that's been installed on those devices and most of the times when it ships out with a brand new Mac device it tends to be that most of the softwares are outdated and so one of the things that I like to do is go into the App Store and check for apps that I can adopt. Now you can find this by going into your App Store and going to this section and you'll be able to see or check for applications that you can adopt in the App Store and also you can see similar applications that you might be interested in that are on your other devices and this will go a long way in making sure that you have all your applications from your other devices. In most cases when a brand new Mac ships out there's always a setting that's turned off and it gives me anxiety because I don't know where I stand if I don't see my battery percentage. So another thing that could better enhance your user experience is to go into the system preferences and go into your menu bar settings and enable the battery setting. This is one of those first things that I typically turn on as I always like to glance in the top right corner of my Mac so that I know where I stand and if I'm planning something later on I'll be able to tell if I'll have enough juice or charge by then. So it's also something that you could always turn on to enhance your experience. While we're still on that topic of battery and percentage it's always good practice to use the devices that come within the box of your Mac to charge your devices. So most of the times if you look on other websites like Wish or like Amazon or Walmart and so on you'll be able to find that there's tempting and better looking accessories and peripheral devices for your Mac but most of the times the charger is one of the most important device that you can inter that your Mac interacts with basically and using the original charger that comes in the box goes a long way in making sure that the amperage and the wattage that your battery is receiving is sufficient and the recommended one and using a cheap knockoff one sometimes will degrade your maximum battery health capacity so if you do look into other options do look at reputable products like Logitech or other higher premium devices and companies or you can also look at Apple's website as they have a, a device where you can also select other peripheral devices or accessories for your Mac. Now other small things that you can do to better enhance and advance your user experience is to basically turn on speech dictation and that will be able to recognize your voice. Also you can turn on Siri for better customization and for quicker searches most of the time so make sure you use your correct voice day-to-day -day voice and also you can always download iOS and iPadOS app on these Apple Silicon devices so you can always search for iOS apps that are most common on your iPhone or on your iPad that aren't yet available on the Mac version and you can use them on your Apple Silicon device so those are some of the things that you can do to better enhance and you know just properly set up your device and make sure you enjoy it the best you can. Now there are some applications that also you know these are like sort of software monitoring and device monitoring applications that I would like to put out there. These help you in knowing how your device functions. So the first one that I would like to mention is TG Pro. Now if you are into like software testing and how 
hardware testing. This is one that you are most probably familiar with. So TG Pro allows you to monitor the different facets of your hardware. You can see temperatures of your GPUs, temperatures of your CPUs, the CPU utilization, the fan speed, and so on. And another application I would like to put out there is Blackmagic. Blackmagic basically deals with your internal and external SSDs if you want to test them and see the read and write speed. And these are some of those, you know, geek apps that you can always use to better understand and see how your app or your device works compared to the specified specification that are mentioned by Apple and see if in real world or in real world application this is so. So those are some of the apps. Clean My Mac X is also another good app that you can use to clean some of the junk and manage your storage better. So if you have an Intel, if you have an M1, if you have an M2, if you have an M1X or M1 Pro, you can always check those out and let me know your feedback in the comment section below. So other than that guys that's just a brief you know overview of the first things to do when you get your new device so that you can best utilize and get the best value for your device because these devices they're not cheap so stay safe guys and enjoy your new device and i'll see you in the next video peace